Hi, my name's Mike Milheim. I'm the 5G technical architect at Keysight Technologies. Today we're at Mobile World Congress 2017, and we're looking at a phased array demo that we're doing with a couple of our partners, University of California in San Diego, and Nokia Wave in Ball Aerospace. So let's take a look at what, what we expect with phased array antennas. The likely first application for phased arrays is going to be a last several hundred meter fixed wireless. We're seeing here we'll have relatively wide beams for this. We're expecting maybe 12 to 15 degree beams. We use relatively simple waveforms and the channel will be relatively straightforward because we're going to be doing beam forming from the top of the house to maybe the top of the light pole. And we'll probably determine the beam forming at installation. So let's look at why this is a technology that we're going to see now. So, Phased arrays are going to be a key element in, in bringing high bandwidth services in for um, millimeter wave communications in 5G. As we'll see when we get a closer look at our phased array antennas, we can have a 64 element antenna array in a very small space. This allows us to beam our signals directly where we want to go with much lower loss than we would see with omnidirectional radiation. Now, why can we do this now? As we'll see, there's been significant advances in some of the semiconductor processes and manufacturing processes that allow this technology to be uh, manufactured in a cost-effective manner. What has to go along with that is also figuring out how to test that in a cost-effective manner. We've been testing phased array antenna systems for any number of years on uh, radar systems, and we've typically developed a, a test methodology where we look at every state on every element. Well, that does a very good job for an expensive radar system, but it's really too much testing, doesn't scale well for cost in a communication system. So we're really looking at a, a, a ways where we can test the entire functionality of the array without having to look at the performance of each individual element. So we think with a, built, with a combination of built-in tests, test modes and some of the larger assemblies, and with these new test technologies allowing us to look at wideband signals, this will really give us the needed tests that we need for phased arrays. So let's take a quick look at what we're measuring here. In our test software here, we're using our 89600 signal analysis software. For the trade show, we have a 100 megahertz wide signal that we're looking at. Now, we could actually do much wider signals with this set of equipment and these phased array antennas, but this was the license that we were able to get for over-the-air measurements at the show. So, what we're doing is we're essentially making our EVM and power measurements, but we're going to do that while we're mechanically moving the transmit antenna and electronically steering it at the same time. So let's go ahead and start one of those measurements. So as we see here, our transmit antenna is steering across a range from plus or minus 45 degrees to plus 45 degrees in azimuth. And as we do this, we're making measurements at every, every single point, but we're also electronically steering the transmit beam back to the receive antenna. So we should see relatively the same signal level and same air vector magnitude across all of these measurements. We're about halfway through our measurement now, so in a few more seconds it'll be complete, and then we can go ahead and look at the results from that. Okay, we've completed that measurement now, so let's take a look at the results here. So here on our center plot here, we're tracing out the power versus the uh, angle that the antenna was at. Now, you might expect to see an antenna pattern, but what we remember what we did is we tuned, we electronically tuned the antenna back to the receive antenna. So really all we're seeing is the power variation that we get as we steer, electronically steer the antenna from one stream, extreme to the other. And then we also, if we look at the, uh, the variations we see in air vector magnitude, those numbers are also quite small. Our total scale here is 100 milli, uh, milli degrees per division, so we had very little variation in the EVM across that. So in this particular measurement, we've looked at EVM and power as a function of steering angle and, and pointing angle, and we could do similar measurements just looking at the EVM and power versus uh, pointing at angle. So again, I hope this has given you a good overview of the type of research that we're doing to help make phased arrays a cost-effective technology for 5G. Thank you.